everyone now, so let's make a start. Hi everyone, thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the webinar today where we're going to be introducing the newest and the fastest member of the Launchpad family, the Launchpad 80. My name is David Hitchings, I'm the AB Dynamics Support Manager and first of all I'd like to introduce you to Leo Evans who is one of our lead project engineers. Leo is also the Launchpad product manager and he and his team have spent a huge amount of time over recent months developing and testing the Launchpad 80 prior to its release now. Leo is going to be taking us through the features of the new platform and covering some of the new ADAS test scenarios that it enables. He'll start in a minute or so, but first of all, let's just check he's there. Hello, David. Yes, lovely to be here. Great, thanks, Leo. We uh, look forward to hearing more from you very, very soon. We're also joined by Dr. Andrew Pick, who is the director of our Track Test Systems business unit. Uh, there will be time at the end for us to answer any of your questions, and Andy is going to be helping us with that. Andy, are you there? Hello, David. Thanks for the introduction, and really nice to see so many people have joined us this afternoon. Um, we're just looking forward to sharing more details about this new development, the Launchpad 80. We are indeed, and if you want to, uh, if you want to ask us a question at any point during the presentations, please just use the Q and A button at the bottom of your screen, and we'll cover those at the end of Leo's presentation. You'll probably also see a chat button, um, but for this webinar and for you guys listening, the chat is disabled, so uh, it's the Q and A button if you want to ask any questions. Right, let me pass over to Leo. Thank you very much, David. So firstly, I'd actually like to take a look at the GST, a familiar site in ADAS testing. And actually, uh, it was a collaboration that started with DRI uh, all the way back in 2011. And DRI is actually part of the Abidynamics group uh, now. And what we did was we incorporated our driving robot and pathfinding technology into a low profile driverless vehicle to carry a soft car target. Essentially, the GST allows safe testing of ADAS systems and with the Softcar 360 was adopted by URNCAP in 2016 as the official global vehicle target. It first started uh, with a max speed of uh, 80, K, 80 kilometers per hour um, and now gone up to 100 kilometers per hour. And recently we've announced our GST 120 for 120 kilometers per hour. So really the, the GST is an essential tool that's used industry-wide to prove ADAS technologies. So that led us on to the launch pad. Now the, launch, the original launch pad was inspired by the GST uh, and development started in 2016. The idea was a highly maneuverable, low profile uh, platform for VRU targets. We made it so that it could have removable batteries and originally was limited to 50 kph, but now offers uh, an upgrade path to 60 kph top speed. This was actually an incredibly uh, successful product and we've launched, uh, since launch in 2019, we've shipped 90 units uh, worldwide, which is quite astounding. However, the, the need for testing uh, has only increased. For, from your end cap, uh, in 2023, there'll be five scenarios dedicated to uh, powered two wheelers or motorcycles. Um, and to give a bit of a background to that, the mot motorcyclists in general represent less than 1% of traffic, but approximately 20% of deaths. And per mile driven, motorcycles are 50% more likely to suffer, motorcyclists are 50% more likely to suffer a fatal injury compared to car drivers. So this really shows that actually this is the next, uh, the next stage of, of making making cars safer. But of course, with all these tests, um, there comes uh, the requirement to travel repeatedly and successfully at 72 and 80 kph. Now, this is something that, of course, uh, exceeded the abilities of our current launch pad. So to meet this need for increased testing, I'm proud to introduce our newest test tool, the Launchpad 80, the future of VRU test platforms. For the first time, making the possibility of testing at higher speeds and decelerations a reality. Let's take a closer look at the platform. So of course, Launchpad 80 stands for 80 kilometers per hour. That is the headline. However, 
And also quite a large headline is the fact that we've doubled the battery capacity um, over the standard launch pad to now a nominal 800 watt hours, which is really brilliant. Um, that's quite a, quite a decently sized battery in my opinion. We've also combined unbeatable braking of six meters per second squared for AEB tests like no other. And of course, it's not just that, we've managed to achieve a very high acceleration of three meters per second squared. And that essentially shrinks test distances and gives you more space for your actual test. Moving on, looking at the key features that are key to your testing. We've made the Launchpad 80 uh, compatible with the PTW target, which is the Euro NCAP Motorcyclist Target or EMT. We've maintained a low profile for drive overs with your test vehicle. And also, of course, um, from the original launch pad, the removable batteries, which allow um, fast pit stops and all day running. Something that's a little bit more uh, subtle um, that you might not necessarily see from our photos so far is just the shape of our chassis. It's actually curved in three dimensions, which means there's no one single face to return radar. And that means that we actually have a very minimal radar return and it merges in with the soft target uh, of the motorcycle. Furthermore, we've got IP67 uh, waterproof rating, which is really great for your assurance that, that a little shower is no, no issue. So moving on to the steering and braking. This is unique to the ABD Launchpad family. It's our highly, success, highly successful four-wheel system. Four-wheel steering brings great maneuverability and path following. And the four-wheel drive with independent wheel slip control protects wear on, the wear on the tires and ensures grip. The low latency motor control enacts traction control for both acceleration and braking. And we've got immensely powerful hydraulic braking um, feeding into that four-wheel braking as well. So com combining the drive motor braking and the hydraulic braking, we really can't be matched. However, for all you engineers, um, I'm sure you'd love to know how we got um, to 80 kph. How did we achieve it? Well, the most obvious start um, of the equation was to double the battery voltage. And in doing so, we doubled the battery capacity, which is a great combination. We also then want to ensure we had sufficient power density. So we've doubled the power of the internal amplifiers that drive the motors. Speaking of which, our redesigned motors are uh, completely for the Launchpad 80, but taking all our knowledge from GST and the Launchpad before it, we now have 40% larger diameter on the motors, and that gives us 50% more torque. And by optimizing the construction and the wiring, we actually have 60% lower resistance. And this gives us a superior efficiency from cell to wheel, particularly when we are pushing over six kilowatts uh, of output from the batteries, which actually competes with light motorcycles of 50 or even 125 cc. And our engineers really did a fantastic job uh, in all the engineering that went into this. So let's zoom in a little bit and look at, look at a test. So I'm presenting to you now a representative test scenario with a PTW target attached. And the graph shows a non-max acceleration from naught to 80 kilometers per hour. And we can do this even at non-maximum acceleration in 140 meters, which is an average of 0.18 G. We then have 200 meters at 80 kilometers per hour, which is nine seconds of test time. And then we have non-maximum braking from 80 down to naught in 130 meters, which is an average of 0.2 G. Now, of course, you can, you can travel for more than 200 meters at 80 kilometers per hour, but this is just a representative test. And, oh, and over, this, uh, over this test, you only cover 470 meters. So that's really great. You can actually do meaningful tests without having an excessively long test track. Furthermore, by increasing the uh, wheelbase and the track width of the, of the, dri of the wheels, drive wheels, um, we've actually increased the stability and from this run, this was actually done on a, uh, a day with 
light crosswinds and was not actually optimal conditions. And you can see that we are, uh, for the most part, within 10 centimeters of path following. And given potentially a smoother track or lower winds, um, we can easily do better than this. But this is a representative example. So what you engineers love though, is when we push it to the maximum. And so if we unleash the performance, what can we do? Well, we can do a maximum acceleration of three meters per second squared. And we even maintain two meters per second squared all the way up to six, 65 kilometers per hour. And ultimately what this means is that we can achieve naught to 80 kph with maximum acceleration in less than 10 seconds uh, over a distance of approximately 130 meters. Then during braking from 80 kph, we can do a maximum and very controlled six meters per second squared. And this combines the motor and hydraulic braking for best efficiency and control. If we look at this, uh, if we look at this um, in action, then you can actually see this is a 50 kilometer per hour test where the motorcycle is traveling at 12 meters ahead of the test vehicle and braking at an unknown, an unknown point at six meters per second squared. It's also very nice to see that the Golf um, properly recognizes the launch pad with the PTW target on it uh, and performs the automatic emergency stop itself, um, which means that they're already ahead of the, of the, of the year end cap 2023. But it isn't just a one off. We can repeat uh, the six meters per sec second. We can repeat the six meters per second squared braking from 50 kph five times with high repeatability and incredible control. There's a video from the external, uh, an external view of the launch pad braking from 50 to zero at 0.6 g just there as well, which is really nice, really nice and steady and stable, nice uniform stopping. Now, I'm sure you also want to know how, with what you can drive over it. Well, as with our other launch, uh, as, as with our other products as standard, we've rated the Launchpad 80 for 1000 kilograms per tire drive over capacity. So that means a four ton SUV, each tire supporting 1000 kilograms of static load. Now also to just to tantalize you slightly, our truck upgrade is coming very soon. Um, and this is from some of our development testing where we have a 44 ton fully laden truck in an abuse case scenario where the truck breaks and drags the launch pad laterally um, as part of the stop. So we don't do it by halves. We're ensuring that it's incredibly durable um, and you have the best assurance for your truck testing. It's also um, key to note that this differs from our competitors in the way that we have established our target carrying philosophy. We believe that it's really important that the um, launch pad sits between the wheelbase of the motorcycle target. And so when you have a camera system, it ensures no ambiguous detection coming from unusual protrusions, either in front of or behind the motorcycle. Now, of course, with all the, the large number of tests that you're going to do, you want to ensure that you have best efficiency. And everything, all the tests that you had to do with a car, you now have to do with a motorcycle as well. So with each Launchpad 80, we ship two sets of batteries, which allow simultaneous running and charging. Essentially, you can run all day and just do a very fast battery swap with our rapid battery swap system and optional hot swap. Now our charger, we've upgraded and improved the software and we actually offer a 45 minute fast charging or, or bulk charging from 10 to 95%. So you can top up your batteries very quickly if you get caught out. But we're also offering um, a fully adjustable uh, power mode and such that you can reduce this right down to two hour slow charging. And this means that you can comfortably charge using an in-vehicle inverter, for example, in your test vehicle or in a base station van. Now, what, 
one set of send one set of batteries um, is enough for 15 repeats of our 80 kilometer representative test. And so, of course, as you drop the speed to 50, you can get even more. So we're quite confident you'll be able to carry out all day testing. Going on to IP67 rating, we thought this would be really interesting to show you. So IP67 offers far greater protection than necessary. We don't actually envisage a one meter underwater, a one meter underwater test scenario. And please, please don't do it. That's that's ridiculous. But actually, this shows uh, how we've tried to go beyond what's really necessary. So we started at the shower at a shower rating, shower and spray, and continued right up to full immersion. And we uh, rigged up a special um, submersion rig, which would actually enable us to submerge the chassis to one meter. So you can be assured that light rain or a damp track is no issue. And when it comes to cleaning, you've got, you haven't got any worry about electronics. Another practical aspect is your lifting safety. So the launch pad is 70, the launch pad 80 is 75 kilograms, which is a little bit heavier than our standard launch pad. So it's best suited for mechanical handling, but can be lifted as a motor person lift if, if needed. And with the launch pad, we supply screw in lifting eyes, which screw directly into the chassis, along with uh, carabiners and lifting slings. So no matter what you want to do, you can, you can maneuver it. To make your life just a little bit easier, we actually are offering optional service wheels. So these jack the launch pad slightly off the ground and enables you to wheel into a workshop or up a ramp into a van. And we also have a convenient detachable handle for pushing or pulling from the waist. We didn't just want to make the Launchpad 80 have a uh, brilliant performance. We also wanted to make it easy to maintain and more of a joy to use. So improving from the standard launch pad, we have now made it such that the nose cones can be removed completely from above without inverting the chassis. So by removing a handful of screws, you can remove the nose cone and expose the drive wheels, motors, suspension, and brakes. Just like our standard launch pad, we have a, a rapid, uh, easy change wheel system where we just have three screws and the wheel can be removed so it's very quick and along with our independent wheel slip um, control basically you, you it should be a joy swapping the wheels <laughs> we're just going to look at the brake system a little bit now as well so actually we've we've managed to incorporate quick change brakes um, just two screws to remove the caliper allow you to change the brake pads. A further one screw releases the brake discs. And the brake discs are actually self-centering and free floating to ensure even wear on both the pads and the disc. And it's actually really interesting. The brake system was designed bespoke for the Launchpad 80. And we optimized the friction material for long life, but also with appropriate thermal mass that allows an intensive duty cycle. So let's revisit. Why on earth are you interested in Launchpad 80? Well, it's because of all the scenarios that you're gonna to have to run. So let's look at some examples. The Launchpad 80 combined with our patented Synchro technology is your testing solution to the upcoming tests. It's an identical software interface to the GSD and Launchpad and slots right in with your existing testing. As you can see, we're using it in this video with a Halo SR and a C-Bar pedal robot. So synchro, synchro software provides vehicle to vehicle data and synchro, synchronized control. And in this scenario, we've got the blind spot overtaking where the Launchpad 80 accelerates to 80 kph and overtakes the test vehicle traveling at 72 kilometers per hour. As you can see in this case, the test vehicle blind spot detection and the lane key persist activates and pretend, prevents a potential collision. Looking at an AEB scenario, in this case, we have the motorcycle traveling with a 12 meter headway at 50 kilometers, hour, with 50 kilometers per hour with the test vehicle also at 50 kilometers per hour. At an unknown point, the motorcycle brakes at a point with a 0.6 G brake and the Golf successfully avoids the collision by picking up the launch pad and applying the brakes.
Another example to look at is the subject vehicle turn across path in a junction scenario. So the test vehicle is, is coming uh, through into a junction with the motorcycle and goes to make a left turn without realizing the motorcycle's there. If the system fails or if the, a, if the AEB is disengaged, then you can have a safe collision. So you're not using a real motorcycle um, and you're certainly not damaging your test car. With the system engaged, the Golf can successfully avoid the collision. So overall, the, G, uh, the Launchpad 80 has many um, positive points um, and I'm really uh, excited to be able to share everything with you today. To summarize, the Launchpad 80 is the newest addition to the Launchpad family. It's our most capable platform yet, and it combines 10 years of ADAS platform development with all the expertise at Abidynamics. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Leo. And also thank you to everyone for all your questions. Um, keep those coming in. Let's start with a couple of commercial questions, which are probably for you, Andy. When will it be available and what is the lead time once ordered? Okay, thanks, thanks, David. So the Launchpad 80 is available now. And for orders that are placed um, uh, today, we're able to deliver first thing in 2022. And that's because we're using the same manufacturing line that we use for our existing launch pads. So we're ready um, and waiting to start building these products for, for new customers. Okay, that's great. Uh, we've had a question from um, existing Launchpad customers. If they have a Launchpad 50 or 60, can they upgrade to a Launchpad 80? So yes, we, we do have a upgrade, upgrade path for our Launchpad 50 product, and that takes it from 50 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour. But to get 80 kilometers per hour, we had to make some fairly fundamental changes to the, to the motor size and the power system to really get the very most from the launch pad chassis. So unfortunately, it's not possible to go from 50 or 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. Um, instead, it's necessary to use this new um, and latest product. Okay, a question on the braking system. Uh, does it have ABS? And yeah, well, actually, there's two questions. Let's start with that. Does it have ABS? I can take this question. So we are introducing ABS uh, via a software update, but actually um, we think this will be mostly um, redundant because actually our wheel slip control with our motors is incredibly responsive. Um, so we can bring the power in and out on the electric motors so rapidly that we can actually prevent the wheel from locking anyway. Um, but we'll soon add this uh, via a software update, add ABS, which will allow us to quickly cycle the hydraulics as well. Okay, thanks very much, Leo. Um, and the second part of that question um, moved on to the motors. Does it have the new potted motor like the GST? So, yeah, so maybe I should pick up on that one. Um, as Leo said earlier, we have incorporated many of the features and um, learnings from our existing products into the Launchpad 80. And the latest generation of GST motors are optimized for um, thermal conductivity so those motors can operate at full power or full current for extended periods of time. We've been able to incorporate the same features into these motors that have been built bespoke for Launchpad 80 so that the heat is transferred from the winding directly into the and away from the center of that motor allowing us to get some really good long um, longevity and durability from the motor. Thanks very much Andy. Uh, Leo, I think you may have covered this, but it's probably worth repeating. Um, how long does it take to charge? So our charger, um, as I mentioned, is actually um, fully flexible. Um, you can actually uh, slide a slider to decide just how much power you want. So on the lower end, you can do a slow charge, which is about two hours, uh, which is suitable for an in-car inverter. So in a base station van or a test vehicle. Uh, but if you push it to the maximum, um, you can actually get a 45 minute fast charge, which does the bulk from 10 to 95%. So essentially the fastest you can charge is 45 minutes. Fantastic, not much time at all. Um, for again, for existing um, Launchpad or, or indeed GST customers or driverless customers, can they use their existing base station? Absolutely. Um, the Launchpad 80 uses the exact same software as the 
uh, original launchpad and GST. So it slots right in uh, with DBS or, or uh, GTC. And of course, RC, you already know how to use. Exactly. Um, is it, next question, is it homologated for the Euro NCAP official test? So the Launchpad 80 has been intended to be capable of carrying out Euro NCAP testing. And the key features are ability to run at 80 kilometers per hour, the braking performance, and also the stability when running at high speed. So really we're looking forward to um, feedback and also contributing as the Euro NCAP 2023 protocol begins to be tested and released um, leading leading up to the next next generation of testing. Thank you, Andy. We've had a few questions around temperature rating. So um, do we have any operating temperature figures that we can share? So again, the, the Launchpad 80 has been tested and runs at um, ambient temperatures of up to 60 degrees Celsius. So we think that gives us plenty of overhead, um, even in the hottest conditions. Fantastic. Uh, we have a question about the uh, the IMU or motion pack. Is there one included and does it work with existing DGPS base stations like OXTS? I can take this one. Um, yes, so we've um, modestly changed the form factor of the OXTS IMU that we use uh, inside the Launchpad 80, but it's the same model used on the Launchpad 50 and 60, um, but it's actually improved to make it easier to remove uh, and send off for calibration. Uh, but it's the sa essentially the same, same board set, same technology. Okay, thanks Leo. The next question is about mounting targets on the Launchpad. Are there any changes needed to the targets that are mounted to the top of the Launchpad? Uh, is the target mounting the same? So the target mounting uh, is the same as for the launch pad 50 and 60. So we have a, uh, a mount that adapts the two leg uh, approach of the 4A PTW uh, to our four, uh, our four magnet mounts, four magnet mount points. Um, so if you are set up with a standard launch pad with a 4A PTW, it will drop straight onto the launch pad 80 without any further changes. Great. I'm not sure if we'll have any figures for this, but uh, it's worth asking. With continuous 0.6 G deceleration, do we know how often the brakes or tyres should be replaced? So we've actually done some durability, durability testing uh, on the brakes, and we're happy for approximately 300 to 500 uh, 0.6 G stops. Uh, before the brake pads need to be re replaced. The tyres, um, they really do vary depending on your test track. So depending on the abrasiveness of your test track, uh, depending on the temperature, um, essentially we would recommend that you inspect the tyres regularly, um, but they're really quite quick to change. Um, so that would be my advice. Yep, thanks Lou. The, uh, the next question is about uh, usage of the product. Does it work the same way as the Launchpad 50 uh, or will I need to be retrained? So um, the Launchpad products are all from the same family and they share the same software, which means that if you can operate one type of Launchpad, you can operate any of them. But we'd always recommend that customers do have training so they can get the very, very best out of these products. Thank you, Andy. At 80 kph, do we have a figure for how many runs we will get? Um, someone's pointed out that we mentioned a day of testing. Um, I suspect that's involving replacing the batteries. Um, but yeah, can anyone give a bit more detail there? Yeah, so based on our development testing, the representative test that I displayed that was approximately uh, 500 meters, um, you should get about 15 runs um, before you have to replace the batteries. And so this should be long enough um, for you to run, uh, run your tests uh, and replace the batteries. So you never, you never end up in a point where you don't have a set of batteries ready to go. Great. Moving on to radios. Is the Launchpad 80 compatible with TrackFi or only PowerMesh? So actually the Launchpad 80 is compatible with all of our radio products, TrackFi, TrackFi PowerMesh, and also the legacy TrackFi Pro radios. 
Thanks, Andy. I think we've, uh, we're starting to run out of time, but um, we've got time for a few more. Um, so our next question is, what are the mandatory or desirable conditions for customer proving grounds? Things like asphalt conditions, maximum slope, uh, high or low friction, etc. So I don't think there's any really real mandatory requirements there. Um, it is a, a low profile flat vehicle, so it needs to run on relatively flat, smooth surfaces. But you can see from the development testing that we shared today that our test track is, is not ideal in every um, circumstance around the flatness and smoothness, but the launch pad has no problems running at 80 kilometers per hour. Thanks, Andy. I'm fairly sure the answer to this is yes, um, but Andy, perhaps you could comment. Will replacement, replacement parts be stocked in the USA? So yeah, absolutely. We'll have a stock of replacement parts, um, just like for the launch pad um, in our offices in the USA, Europe, Japan, and held in the UK. And next question is about the target weight. Uh, so what's the maximum target, a uh, weight of, of target that can be carried by the launch pad 80? So in this case, um, it's actually the four APTW weighs 19 kilograms. And so that's what we would, that's what we'd state. Um, increasing beyond this, actually it's the braking that we would, we uh, is not becomes not optimum because it's your braking is proportional to your load. So 19 kilograms. Great, thank you, Leah. Um, we've got time for just one more question now. Um, is the Launchpad 80, can it be used for VRU tests or is it only for motorcycle testing? So really the Launchpad 80 is intended for motorcycle testing um, and it's been optimized for these high speed tests that um, are needed for motorcycles and proving the safety of systems that will protect motorcyclists. So the Launchpad product and the standard Launchpad still remain probably the best solution for pedestrians and bicycle targets. But nevertheless, there's a variety of things you could put on top of Launchpad 80. Thanks very much, Andy, and also Leo. Uh, I'm afraid we have now run out of time. So thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Um, and thank you for all your interesting questions. We didn't get around to those, uh, to all of, all of those, um, but we will respond individually uh, if we didn't get around to your question. Please also feel free to email track support at abdynamics.com and the track support team will either answer your question or make sure it gets sent to the right person. You will be able to view a recording of the webinar um, in about 24 hours time if you missed anything and you'll be notified by email at that point. The same applies to anyone who registered but wasn't able to attend. And if you have any colleagues who uh, for some reason weren't aware of this webinar and want to view it, um, please just ask them to do the same as what you did. So go to launchpad80.com and they'll be able to register there to view a recording as well. So that brings the webinar to a close. Thank you very much indeed again from me and from our panelists.